In today's video, I show you how to take a bunch of pictures and quickly create a simple photo montage slideshow using Premiere Pro. The first thing we wanna do is create a new sequence. If you're familiar with how to do this, skip to the next chapter, but we go up to File, New, Sequence. For sequence presets, a good starting point is digital SLR 1080p, DSLR 1080p 24 frames. If we head over to the settings tab, make sure that all of your settings look like this. One thing to note is if you wanted to edit and export in the higher resolution of 4K, you would switch this to 3840 by 2160. But for this project, I'm sticking with 1920 by 1080 HD because most of the time these end up being really lengthy slideshows and I like a smaller file size. You can name the sequence down here and hit OK. Next, we wanna import our photos. If you don't see your project bin, just go up to Window, Projects, and click whatever project you're working on. In the negative space of your project bin, right click, hit New Bin. Rename it Photos and open it. And go to File, Import. Find your photos, highlight them all, and import them. Now we can place our photos in the correct order by hitting this little icon down here that also represents Icon View. To have a better view of what we're doing, place the mouse above your project bin and hit the tilde key. It's the key located below your escape button on the keyboard. Now we have a full screen view of our thumbnails. With this scroll bar down here, you can make the preview smaller or bigger, and now you can click, drag, and reorder all of your pictures however you want to. If for some reason it's not letting you reorganize this, or maybe you went to list view and then back to this view, something got messed up, just go down here to the sort icons and make sure user order is checked. Once you have the photos in the right order, we wanna make sure that when we put it on the timeline, the duration of the photos are what you want. Hit Command A on Mac or Control A on Windows to select all of your icons. Right click, and go to Speed Duration. If you're unfamiliar with timecode, these numbers are the hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. So if you're looking for five seconds, I wanna change these digits to five and this to zero. All of these pictures are now set to a duration of five seconds. Unminimize this by hitting the tilde key. I'm going to click and drag these onto the timeline. One of the first things you'll notice is all of the photos aren't framed correctly. What we need to do is select all of them on the timeline. So I'm gonna hit Command A, right click. Now I did make a whole video about set to frame size versus scale to frame size, but with this procedure, it's better to do scale to frame size. Now all of the photos are scaled proportionally to the frame. But if you notice, we have black bars on the side. So what I like to do at this point is see what the majority of the photos look like inside the frame and what I really need to scale these up to in order to fit the frame. And it looks like the majority of these photos kind of have this amount of black space. Some have more, some have less, but on average, they're about like this. So I'm gonna treat this first photo as my base one to start manipulating. In order to scale this up correctly, we need to bring up the effects controls window by going to window, effects controls. I'll scale up the video until it takes up the full frame. So it looks to be about 120. What I wanna do is apply that same effect to the rest of the photos. So I'm going to highlight this first photo, right click, go to copy. Then I'm gonna do that same keyboard shortcut of command A or control A, right click and do paste Paste attributes. What this does is paste the attributes or the effects from the last clip that you had copied to the clipboard. So what we're telling Premiere Pro to do is copy the motion attributes from this clip to all of the other clips that I have highlighted. I'm gonna hit okay. And now at this point, most of the photos take up a bulk of the screen. Again, there are some outliers here, but that's okay, we'll address that in a little bit. The next thing we wanna do is a cross dissolve. And just so we make sure that the parameters are set up before we apply this cross dissolve, I'm gonna go up to Premiere Pro, Preferences, Timeline. And underneath Timeline, Video Transition Default Duration, right here it says 30 frames. And just so everybody's on the same page, what I want to do is switch this over to seconds and just make it one second. Now I'm going to hit OK. One other thing we wanna make sure that's set up is if we go to Effects, Video Transitions, Dissolve, by default, your cross dissolve should be your default transition, but if it isn't, right click cross dissolve and say set selected as default transition. Now that we have those parameters set up for everyone, again, I'm just gonna hit Command A so it highlights all of the clips. If we go up to Sequence, Apply Video Transition. You can also hit Command D on Mac or Control D on Windows if it's set up that way. So I'll hit that. And now we have a simple cross dissolve between every single photo on the timeline. I'll go in and delete the first and last cross dissolves on the timeline. And let's move on to adding that subtle Ken Burns style push-in effect to each photo. To first apply this push-in effect, 
we want to find an example of a photo that takes up the entire screen as well as has a crossfade on the beginning and ending of it. And I'm going to take the playhead, move it to the very first frame, go to my scale and toggle on animation by clicking this stopwatch. 120 is where I want to start the scale in. So I'm gonna now take the playhead and move it all the way to the last frame. And subtlety is the key here. You don't want huge movements, just a little bit. And for that, maybe I'll just do 125. So now we have a nice little effect like this. Notice how it's just scaling in a little bit. I don't wanna to go too extreme. And just like before, I wanna take that same effect and paste it to the rest of my photos. So I'm going to right click this photo and go to copy. I will hit Command A to highlight all of them, right click, paste attributes, make sure that motion is selected and hit OK. Now all of my photos will replicate that same scaling in effect. But if you notice, we still have the black bars on some of the photos. And here's a simple way to get rid of that. Again, I'm gonna highlight all of my photos on the timeline. So Command A, then I'm going to hold Option on Mac or Alt on Windows and click and drag these photos to the layer above it. One key thing here is that you don't want to shift the photos in any way, shape or form. So make sure that it reads all zeros when you're moving it up one. Otherwise, you're gonna get a little bit of an offset between the two layers. The next thing I'm gonna do is highlight all of these clips on track one. So you could go to your track select forward tool, hold shift and just select the clips on track one, or you could just click and drag and highlight them. I'm going to right click and nest that bottom layer, hit okay. Now with the sequence nested, find whatever photo has the most black bars on it in the frame, which happens to be this one that we were focusing on. Highlight your nested sequence, go to your effects controls window and scale it up until there's no more black bars. Next, go to your effects window. Under video effects, blur and sharpen, Gaussian blur, click and drag that onto the nested clip and bring up your blurriness. Make sure you click repeat edges. Now we have a blurry background for all of those photos that had a black background. So the last thing to do is export. What I'm gonna do is highlight all of my material. So hit command A, then I'm gonna hit the question mark key that sets up my in and out points. Let's go up to file, export, media. I've already made a complete tutorial on how to export videos from Premiere Pro. I'll link it right here if you wanna check it out. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail. What I will say is that underneath format, just make sure it's H.264. And if you scroll down underneath the video tab, your target bitrate is basically what's going to determine the quality of your video export. If you raise this up, you will have a higher quality export, but it's gonna come at the cost of a much bigger file size. So if you look at the estimated file size down here, the larger I make this bitrate, the larger your estimated file size is. The smaller that I make this bitrate, the smaller the file size is. So if you're doing an hour to two hour long, slideshow, you would probably want to keep this bitrate lower at something like five. But if you are doing something like a four minute one, like I just did, maybe you could do something up to 10 or even higher. It's completely up to you and your situation. Just pick a bitrate, see what looks best and stick with it. One last thing is up here underneath output name. If you click that, this is where you would be sending your export. So I'm going to just send this to my exports folder. Example one, hit export. And now I'm in the process of exporting this slideshow. If this video is helpful, don't forget to leave me that thumbs up. If you are looking to put music in the background of this montage and loop that music to a specific duration, well, I have a video on how to do that right here. And until next time, I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye.